Okay, so I have the reading of Cicero's journal. Um, I'm in the middle of Quest, The Cure for Madness, where Cicero has just now went crazy in the middle of the sanctuary and uh, almost killed our Aragonian brother, and then took off. Arbitron took off after him, and uh, I am to look for clues in Cicero's room for where he, where he might have went, where he might have ran off to. And I found five different volumes of his journal. So uh, let's kick this off. 18th, eve uh, 18th of Evening Star, 4E186. So right now is like 4E201. So 4E186 is about 14 years ago, 14, 15 years ago. As I begin this new phase of my life, I have decided to finally keep a journal. So much has happened to me thus far, both within the Brotherhood and without. When I think there is no record of what has transpired, it almost seems an affront to Sithis himself. So I am determined to make amends. Yes, the Dark Brotherhood has its own scribes and chroniclers, but it is their solemn task to record those events deemed important to the organization as a whole. Let this volume serve as the personal record of one man, a lowly assassin, who has pledged his blade and his life for the Dark Brotherhood. 23rd of Evening Star, 4E186, so same year, five nights later. I have arrived safely in the Chaden Hall Sanctuary, and have been greeted warmly by Rasha and the others. So 15 years ago, the Chaden Hall Sanctuary was still alive and kicking. Um, interesting, because you actually killed it in Oblivion. You annihilated the Chaden Hall Sanctuary. Everybody there was thought to be a traitor, and, and you were the instrument of uh, the, s the listener, actually the speaker, who at that time was Lucian Lachance. I've uh, been greeted warmly by Rosh and the others. Indeed, the level of support and acceptance shown by my new family is rather overwhelming. For this sanctuary knows suffering, knows sorrow, for the ghosts of purification still haunt its halls. So who better to understand the plight of a brother who has lost home and heart? Who better to comfort one whose sanctuary is no more? The Bruma Sanctuary may be gone. But my dearest brothers and sisters will live forever in my dreams. So it sounds like something similar to what happened in the Chadenhall Sanctuary in Oblivion back in the Third Era. Probably also happened in the Bruma Sanctuary, which in Oblivion, I don't think there was a Bruma Sanctuary. If there was, I missed it somehow. But my dearest brothers and sisters will live forever in my dreams, just as their souls live forever by the Dread Father's side. First of Rain's Hand, 4E187. So Rain's Hand is a different month. I'm not exactly sure how the months play out, so I'm not sure. This is a year and something later, because the 186 to 187 difference. Completed the Baroness contract. She died well. Her handmaiden, less so. Twelfth of Rain's Hand, 11 days later. Chayton Hall suits me. With the destruction or abandonment of the other sanctuaries, our contracts are plentiful, as are our bonuses. Still, we seem to be losing our footholds throughout Tamarill. At an alarming rate, there are rumors that the Black Hand is split on our continued direction. Some favor expansion, the others consolidation. My personal feeling is that the Dark Brotherhood needs to, at the very least, maintain the illusion of being everywhere at once. It has become exceedingly difficult to fulfill, or even establish, contracts in provinces where we no longer have a physical presence, like Hammerfell. The more we ignore Tamriel, the more people lose faith in the Dark Brotherhood. Our power, our services, our dedication to the Void. So that's interesting that he mentions that Hammerfell has no Dark Brotherhood presence. That may allude to, if they ever do an iteration of the Elder Scrolls in Hammerfell, it may allude to an absence of the Dark Brotherhood, or maybe they'll do some really cool quest chain where you get to bring the Dark Brotherhood there. That'd be pretty cool. 27th of Rain's Hand, 4E187. The Listener, uh, Alassani. Alassani Dupree. The listener, Alassani Dupree, has been visiting with us for several days, down from her private residence in Breville. She and Rasha have been discussing the possibility of reopening the Shadow Scale training facility of Archon and Black Marsh, but ultimately decided we lacked the resources to follow through with the plan. Uh, is that the same day, 27th of Rainhand? The exact same day he makes another entry, again dating it, that's kind of strange. Completed the arena contract. I ultimately decided to pose as a starstruck fan, and immediately got into the, guard ch the Grand Champion's good graces. While escorting the arrogant fool through the great forest, I slashed his throat and left the corpse for the bears. So that concludes the first volume of Cicero's journal. Let us move on to volume two. Seventh of Sun's Height, 4E188. So again, it's jumped about a year. 
Way rest is lost. The city fell to Corsairs, and it's just a matter of time before the sanctuary is breached. May the Night Mother watch over her children in their hour of need. Fifth of last seed, same year. We received word today the Wayrest Sanctuary was raided and destroyed by the Corsairs. There were no survivors. There are now only three active Dark Brotherhood strongholds remaining. The Chadenhall Sanctuary, here in the Imperial Province. A remote sanctuary located in a forest in Skyrim. That's the sanctuary I'm standing in right now. And the Corinth Sanctuary of Elsewhere. Elsewhere, I want to say, is home to the High Elves. Although that might be the Bosmer. That might be the Wood Elf. That's really bad that I'm a Wood Elf and I don't perfectly know. I know it's one of those two. The Black Hand has ordered the Corinth Sanctuary closed and its members integrated into our own ranks here in Shadenhall. I will embrace those new family members as warmly as I was when I first made my home here. Oh, okay, so as warmly as he was greeted. That kind of sounded weird for a second. 27th of Hearthfire. The situation in Breville grows more dire. The city has erupted in violence due to a war of control being waged by Cyrodiil's two largest skooma traffickers. The listener, Alessane Dupree, has been forced to employ cell swords to protect her own residence. First of Sun's Dusk. Things in Bravel have come to a head. The statue of the lucky old lady has been destroyed, and Alessane Dupree has left her residence to guard the crypt of the Night Mother, hidden below the remains of the statue. If the crypt is discovered, Alessane Dupree will, of course, protect the remains of the unholy matron until her dying breath. Rasha is sending Garnag and Andronica to aid in the crypt's defense. I begged to accompany them, but Rasha wouldn't have it. He says my place is here, defending this sanctuary, and I must, of course, respect that decision. Twelfth of Sun's Dusk. Botched my contract and forfeited the bonus. The silk merchant was already cold, and I was halfway through the window when her daughter stepped into the room. I had little choice at that point. 21st of Sun's Dusk. Wow, that sounds messed up. It sounds like he uh, was supposed to kill her silently without the daughter knowing, and instead probably killed both of them. So much has happened since my last entry. After Garnag and Andronica left for Bravo, we stopped receiving communications from the city. We feared the worst. This morning, those fears were confirmed when Garnag returned alone, transporting a most precious cargo, the great stone coffin of the Night Mother herself. The story Garnag told could curl, could curl the blood of even the most hardened of Sithis's servants. The crypt of the Night Mother raided. Dearest sister Andronica, cut to pieces, and the listener herself, the most honored Alessane Dupree, burned alive in a storm of mage fire. Garnag, though gravely injured, he will most certainly lose his right eye, managed to fend off the attackers and transport the Night Mother's coffin safely out of the city. I have no idea how he did that. That coffin is enormous. He has been on the road, making his way back here since that tragic night. That concludes Volume 2. Volume 3. 23rd of Sun's Dusk, 4E188. So this is actually the same year. Didn't jump a year this time. Now that things have settled down, the reality of our situation has finally come to bear. We are a dark brotherhood without a listener. With no listener, the Black Sacrament will go unheard. Surely the Night Mother will speak to someone soon, thus choosing a new listener to take Alessane Dupree's place. Until that happens, though, we must take to the streets. We must hear the pleas of the desperate and vengeful. The people of Tamriel must not know, must never know, that their prayers to the Night Mother are going unheeded. 24th of Morning Star, 4E189, so that time it did jump to the next year. It is a new year, and two months since the Night Mother first arrived here at the Chadenhall Sanctuary, and still the unholy matron has not seen fit to speak to any one of us. And so, Rasha has decided to revive an ancient Dark Brotherhood tradition, the appointing of a keeper, a guardian whose sole duty is the safeguarding of the Night Mother's remains. The remaining members of the Black Hand will make their decision tomorrow. 25th of Morning Star, same year. I have been chosen. By some incomprehensible twist of fate, the Black Hand has named me the Night Mother's Keeper. In all honesty, I am both incredibly honored and deeply saddened. This means the end of my contracts. I'll be lucky to lift a blade again. Thankfully, Rasha has promised me one final contract before I accept my new duties. 30th of Morning Star. The jester lies dead. My final contract has been completed. Oh, how he laughed and laughed until he didn't. 
Third of first seed. I think I know where Cicero got his clothes now. Third of first seed. I have settled well into my new role as keeper. It is my duty to not only keep the Night Mother's shrine clean and the candles lit, but to tend to the body as well. The Night Mother's crypts, oh, I'm sorry, the Night Mother's crypt was co a consecrated place. Shroud, kissed, absent of sunlight. Shroud, kissed, absent of sunlight. And safe from the world above. Removed from there, the remains are subject to the filth and corruption of the living. The body is perfectly preserved, so the concern is not physical, but rather spiritual. The remains must be sanctified regularly, so that they may continue to serve as a conduit for the Night Mother's soul. Our matron's eternal spirit may travel the void freely, but it is through her own earthly remains that she communicates with the listener. And so I wash the corpse weekly with the requisitive oils recite the ancient incantations, and personally see to the extermination of any insects or rodents.